Children for life firms, minor firms, cop firms, your house firms, your life firms. You should be put first the man that gonna wake you up in the morning. The Bible says he breathed, amen. He breathed into his mouth and breathed well. Life. He breathed what? Life. We don't have life without God. Y'all think they don't want to do so much. All they're gonna do is a big bag of medication in your home. But they ain't gonna cure it, they just to sustain you. They ain't got no cure for sugar like the heart oppression. Trust the wrong sign and allergy. They give you medication for it. Come on, talk to me. But Jesus helped the cure for our disease and sickness. He said, I am the God that healed thee. I am the God that healed thee. Hi. He said, call upon me and I will answer. Have you been calling upon God on this morning? Do you tell God to heal your body? So you depend on the doctor, you depend on God. He needs to heal up. When something happens in your life, it's up to God whether you're going to live or not. And everybody put everything before God. And you need to put God first. He's the one you want to wake up every morning. Amen. 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 He began to breathe in that nausea. He became what? Amen. And in the breath of life. And he became a one of living soul. He became a living soul. God had power over life and death. It's not up to the doctor whether you're gonna make it or not. It's up to God. People that gave up hope, they ain't living now. People on the machine came off the green machine. Amen. And the people that didn't give long. Come on, amen. God help the last soul over death. Amen. 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 God breathed in you this morning. How you woke up? He breathes in you. And we put things before God. We put stuff before God. Amen. And God already said, I am a what? Jealous. I'm jealous. Amen. So he began to breathe a man and then he began and became a living soul. I'm going to breathe. Somebody said, God, breathe on me. Breathe on his ministry. Breathe on his marriage. Breathe on that son. Breathe on that daughter. Breathe on the ranch and breathe on the finances. Breathe on me. Somebody said, God, breathe life to me this morning. Breathe your anointing on me. Come on. Breathe your wealth on me, God. Breathe your power upon me. Breathe your anointing upon me. Breathe strength upon me. Breathe. I need you to breathe on me, God. I think I'm only going to breathe on me. Oh, somebody said, I think that's on the inside. I think that I need to feel your spirit. I need to feel your power. I need to feel your anointing. I need to feel that quickening. Yes, I need you to quicken me. I need you to touch me. I need you to breathe on me. I need you to touch me. I want to feel the Holy Spirit. I want to feel the Holy Ghost. I want to feel the power. Breathe on my brother's hand. Breathe on my ministry. Breathe on my family. Breathe on me, God. Somebody say, God, breathe on me. Somebody say, God, breathe on me. He begin to breathe on me. Let's go to, let's go to Ezekiel 37. Oh, I feel the presence. I feel the power in this place. There's an unusual one in this place. He's in this place. He's in this place. His presence is in his place. His power is in his place. His anointing is in his place. Ezekiel 37 and 1. See, I, I don't know about you, but I need God to give me some dreams. No dreams. I need God to give me some vision. I need God to come in a room and come and give me a visitation. Come on, I need God to give me an open vision. I need God to show me who my enemy is. I need God to show me my sign behind my back so I can bind it up.
Ik moet ik open mijn aan, zo ik hem zien. De boeken laat me zeggen, blijft dit. Dit is de portion dat ik me zie. En blijft dit de portion dat ik me hier. I wanna see the God, and I wanna hear you speak to me. God, I wanna talk to you. God, I wanna come to the room and talk with you. God, I wanna give you a visitation. He wanna give you dreams. He wanna give you a vision. He wanna give you open vision. God wants you to be close to him. He's a draw to me now. He said, if you abide in me, I will abide in you. He said, if you abide in me, I abide in you. And number one says, Genesis 37, 1. I'm saying Ezekiel. Somebody get out of Ezekiel. I'm up there now. Right? Ezekiel. <laughs> Ezekiel 37. I'm up in heaven. Please! Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me. And carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. I'm gonna lie, the hands of the Lord was upon me. I'm gonna lie, the hands, his hand, the hands of the Lord was upon me. Come on, talk to me. The hands of the Lord was upon me. Someone said, God, touch me with your hands. Touch me with your hands. Touch me with your hands. Ezekiel was a prophet. And God used him to prophesy. And he says, the hand of the Lord was upon me. And he said, and he, said, and he carried me out. You need God to carry you out in the spirit. You need God to swing you out in the spirit. You need God to carry you. The burden to the heaven. You need him to push. You need him to push. You need him to carry you. Carry. Oh, you don't have a baby that was strong. You push it. You need God to push you. You need God to carry you. The burden that has overwhelmed you is too much for me. But ah, oh, the book of Exodus of Moses says, God is too much for me. It's too much for me. The burden is too heavy. And God gave those seven elders. To strengthen him, to bless him with the ministry. And he says, he carried me out in the spirit. You need God. You need God to carry you out in the spirit. What are you crying for? Are you crying for the anointing? Are you crying for the power? Are you crying for this person? God want to come in the room and see you. He want to visit you. He came in my room and took me for a ride home. All around the house, he brought me back. Amen. 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 God wants you to come in the room with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to lead you. He wants to call on you. God ain't get it with you. Don't want He want you. Somebody said, God want me. He called for me. Amen. And it says He. He says what? He carried him in the spirit of the Lord. God want to take you in the spirit. He want to take you up in the spirit. Amen. He's sitting down in the midst of what? The valley. Full of bones. He dropped him down in the valley. Come on, talk to me. He went down in the midst of the valley. A valley of dry plains. Nothing there. But there was nothing there in the valley with dry bones in Ezekiel. God will put you in a place. By yourself, it's you and God. You God gonna do a separation where it'll just be you and God. And if you want to, so what? You're gonna have to pray. It's gonna take God to fix it. You can't fix it. The government can't fix it. The president can't fix it. It's gonna take you to fix it. It's gonna take God to fix it. Amen. And he's carrying them. Now, what about God get this prophet and drop them in the valley? A trap bones. A place. Nothing. You've been a place of nothing. You've been a place of lost everything. You've been a place that's been a ride. You've been a place where you had to stay with somebody. You've been a place of nothing. But God lit you now. God don't brought you out. So I said, He brought you out. So I said, He brought me out. Verse 2 says, And it caused me to pass by the ground about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. There were a lot of bones in the valley, in the valley, right? But it was very dry. 
and somebody today, you're in a dry place. You're in a place where you gotta make some decisions. You're in a place where you gotta make decisions where it'll be them of God. Whether it be mother of God, whether it be people of God, whether it be family of God, you're gonna be in a, a dry place. You gotta choose this day who you're gonna serve. Choose this day. You gotta make some decisions. You gotta get your life together. You gotta get your mind together. You gotta get your health together. Amen. You drop in a very valley and a low on the low. It was very dry. Very God put you in a very dry place. A dry place. And we're about to be the more separation moving around your life. That means I'm gonna get ready to do something in your life. It's me and you now. I want you to run at me. I want you to run at me. I want you to talk to me. I want you to pray. I want you to fast. I want you to worship. I want you to sing your new song when you get up in the morning. I want you to call upon me when you wake up in the morning. When you roll over, don't get the phone. Don't go on Facebook. Don't call them about it. The time you wake up, call on me. Talk to me. Pray. Seek me first. The kingdom of God. It is right to you. Everything else. Amen. 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 Your day to go right. I said, Burn up, she got up, talk about Pray for your mama, pray for your dad, pray for your son, your brother, your children, your grandchildren. Pray. What's this? In the book of Matthew, chapter 9 says, My house should be called the house of prayer. Verse 3 says, Verse 4. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answer, O Lord God, thou knowest. God is talking to easy. God knows everything. But he asks him. But he asks him. But he asks him. Amen. He's a son of man, can he born to live? God, why would God ask you to that? You know, he already know the answer. Al Wild, though, God knew what Al was. He said, I don't know. He knew where I was. And I'm going to see you go give me the right answer. I'm going to see you go tell me the truth. I'm going to see you have a revelation of what's going on. He said, Where are you Amen. Come on, God is talking to Ezekiel. And he said, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answer, Oh Lord, God, don't know. He said, Go ahead, you know what these bones live in my heart. Yes. <laughs> Come on, talk to him. He in a place of dry bones. But he was speaking at that, I would say, yeah, they can live. What can you speak to? You all what you speak. First, somebody said, God is good. Verse 4 says, Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. See, he's an easy one. He prophesies. Go ahead, prophets in the Bible. He had evangelists, apostles, and teachers, and prophets in the Bible. He's a prophet. He goes, I want you to prophesy to the dry bones. Because in the book of Genesis, when I gave Adam dominion over the earth, helping me what? He gave him dominion over heaven and earth. So I want you to, and he used Adam to speak to the Adam and name each one of the animals, right? In the same way that voice is here in the spirit. And God is saying, you are what you speak. You speak and you broke, okay, bro, I'm gonna take you. You speak and you ain't gonna never have that thing where that spirit gonna attack you. You say, I'm gonna never get married where that spirit gonna attack you. You say, we're gonna lose everything where that spirit gonna go out and attack you. You are what you speak. You gotta sound rich. I'm a wet, I'm a man, I'm gonna some houses, and dogs, and all. I'm gonna get the power, I'm gonna get some anointing, I'm gonna get the wealth, I'm gonna walk into the same. Amen. Speak not on things that they are. You might not see, but you gotta you, you speak your own life into existence. Amen. You gotta speak bigger to come forth, wealth to come forth, house to come forth, job to come forth, promotion to come forth, marriage to come forth, children to be saved to come forth. 
Paul ran to him and said, Now, what are you just speaking like that? Whatever you speak, that's what's going to work for you. Amen. Amen. What are you speaking? Stop cursing yourself. Amen. Stop believing yourself. Stop looking down on you. Stop, stop thinking you ain't nothing. You are somebody. You're special. Somebody say, I'm special. And I got the favor of God on my life. God loves me. Come on. You're special. And so Paul said, Ezekiel, you in the right places. I want you to speak to this. I want you to speak this house to existence. I want you to speak your marriage to existence. I want you to speak your health into existence. I want you to speak, you to speak your job, your promotion. I want you to speak in the position. God, God don't do it again when he says finish. Now God, I'm using your voice. I speak to the nation for blessing, for healing. Amen. Amen. I speak to the nation for everybody to save, everybody to deliver, everybody to free. I speak to the nation for protection. Not a gunshot, the assassinate, the murder, the thief, the witchcraft, hex, spells, and curse. I'm speaking it to the nation to put a spot to it. Yeah. What are you speaking about? I want to use your voice in the spirit realm. He wants you to go into the power to pull down stronghold, to break yokes. He said, I want to have, he said again, verse 4 said, again, he said unto them, to me, he said, prophesy to my mind, prophesy to these bones. Your bones is what's missing. Your bones is what you're waiting on. Things you are waiting on. Some of us said, things that you are waiting on. Things that you are waiting on. You have to speak it. You got to say, God, I'm not man to do the prayer. I'm not me to sing. I'm not me to teach. I'm not me to preach. Give me the revelation of the word. Give me the wisdom. Give me the knowledge of you. Hungry and thirsty. Yes, the righteous. Yes, yes, you hungry for everything. Hungry for a new house. Hungry for a new car. Hungry to get married. Hungry to be rich. Are you hungry for Jesus? Yes. Come on, man. If you get Jesus, everything will fall into place. Once you got down, you're okay because I already done. It says I already done. Your healing is already done. Your blessing is already done. Everything is already done. Amen. He says, Ezekiel, I want you to speak to these bones and say unto them, Oh, try bones. Hear. You got to hear the word of God. You got to hear God's voice. Hear the word of who? Of the Lord. You got to hear the word of the Lord. Open your ears to hear. You got to deal with speaking to your oppression. He prays and talking about you. You got the Bible saying, hey, she will have a shot. He said in the book of Matthew, he said, we bind on earth, we bind in hell. What you loose or we loose in hell? What are you binding? What are you loosing? Amen. Amen. Verse 5 says, Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. He said, I will cause. Not the president, not the government, not family, not friends. He said, I will cause the breath in you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He said, I will cause, amen, the breath to be in you. Amen? Yeah. God breathed in Adam. And that same breathing he done in the book of Genesis. When he began to speak things to exist, the, the earth was on God. He began to speak to the animals, speak to man, speak to woman. Amen. He began to make woman from animals real. I know you got real, but. <laughs> so he says, he says, you know, what, I shall, I shall, I shall. He's a breeze. So I'm going to breathe. I will call breath to you and to you, and yet shall what? You cannot live without God breathing. He breathed in Adam. He breathed in. Come on. He's not going to breathe in you to cause you to live. The devil trying to take you out. The devil trying to give you bad health. When people do x ray God gave me a revelation about x ray When you go to the doctor and get X-rays and it's show up, God told me it already been there. He just seen it. But God can see it before the doctor. God can look in the body and say, find this girl. I to stop this spiritual attack. Amen. In a sense, he began to breathe. But people who are trying to keep you from going to church, your own family will pull you out of church. Your own friends will pull you out of church. Your enemy will pull you out of church. 
People all over pulling you out of church. And you, I need to go with a man who wake up in the morning. I need to go with a man who don't send an angel to protect me. I'm not going to go with a man who's going to bless me, going to help me, going to leave me, going to adopt me. Amen. And it says to him, he, he breathed into him, and he shall yet shall live. And I hear God saying that you shall live. Amen. You shall live. Now, only you going to live, your health is going to be all right. Your finances are going to be all right. Your life is going to be all right. Your ministry is going to be all right. Your marriage is going to be all right. Your children are going to be all right. Everybody in your family is going to live. Somebody say, I'm standing in there for the generation. Everybody going to live and not die. He said, live. He said, I will cause breath to them and to you, and yet shall will live. I'm going to get ready to close out in just a minute. Verse 7 says, so I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. So let me not prophesy. So when you see me and the man of God prophesy, it's in the Bible. Amen. Well, how do you know how they about us? God told us. Amen. We don't about you. God will reveal that. And God do promises decent and decent and all. If it's something you're gonna promise it, and it's something that God wants everybody to hear in the whisper in your ear, or it's something they don't need to know. Come on. God will never put your shame in promises. You do stuff decent and all. If it's something concerning you, something serious, something about what you know about, you put it in your ear. Oh, I hope you don't hear that. No, no, no. God never gonna get taken in your ear. Come on, talk to me. And we get going to praise Amen. Because you know why I said that? Because somebody wanted me. I can feel you. I can hear your thoughts. I can feel your thoughts. I can hear your thoughts. Somebody would wonder where I go. She might tell me. She might tell me. He might tell me. No, no, no. God do stuff decent and order. But he began to prophesy. Prophesy what the real seal. God began to reveal to us what's going on or what you need to know or to prepare you. Amen. For what's going to take place. Amen. And tell you the do's and the don'ts to help you. Someone say amen. amen. Someone say amen. amen. He said, I'm called breath to come into it, and you shall sure live. So Sam says, so I honor that. So I prophesy as I was. Come on, talk to him. I prophesy as I was. Amen. I prophesy as I was. Amen. Are you doing what God command you to do? Amen. What did God tell you to do? You, you, when you have a position in church, don't take it light. You about to take it serious, but the Bible says you're not doing it to man or woman, you're doing it to the Lord. Amen. Whatever work you do in ministry, whatever stuff you're doing, you, you're doing it to God. I'm standing here, I'm doing it for God. I'm doing what He called me to do, or you're doing what He called you to do. You don't want your mom and girl complaining, sit down. If you don't want mom and girl complaining, sit down. If you got a billion people to take your place. You don't need you here. You don't need me. I need him. God don't need you. You got busy people to take your place. You don't need me. Amen. You move out of the position, you're changing with nature. Someone said nature. What he did with Saul. Saul kept messing up. Kept messing up. He kept messing up. He kept messing up. God moved Saul and said, David, a man after my I call me a man after my heart. He will replace you. Yeah. What remember, do you remember last year? Well, apparently, y'all remember this? When I prophesied, I said, God, get ready to do a shaking in the spirit. Yeah. I said, get ready to clean the pulpit. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Is he doing it? Yeah. Clean it up. Yeah. I prophesied that last year. Yeah. And two years ago, I said, God, get ready to do a shaking. Yeah. He going to do a cleansing. He's going to start in the pulpit. Yeah. And come on down. Yeah. And he's shaking it. Yeah. He's shaking it. Not just the big church, but it's the small churches too. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. God just spoke that out. He said, not just the big churches. He said, the small ones too. But God is tired. Enough is enough. Everybody gets over the water, but take their own heat to the morning. Get the heat to the morning. Verse, he said, so I promise that as I was commanded. He commanded. When God tell you to do it, you got to do it. He, he said, and I prophesied there was a what? Noise. Who was that noise? A noise. A noise. 
Behold, a shaking bones came together. Bones to bones. Bones begin to come together. Family begin to come together. Marriage begin to come together. Job begin to come together. Life begin to come together. God begin to put things back together. Again, you're going to get broken. God will restore it back. We just want to go and restore some things back in your life. You can really put some things back together. Things have been broken up in your life. Marriage has been broken up. Family has been broken up. Jobs have been broken up. Health has been broken up. Finances have been broken up. But I hear God say, we're going to put some things together. Let me try to try to shout first so we can hold the word again. You are going to pray that. Let me shout out the word of God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to have a word for you. So I'm going to have a word for you today. We have a word for you today. God, you must have some stuff in your life. You can be ready to do some shaking. You're going to be also making some noise in your life again. You're going to be ready to do some shaking in your life now. I'm shaking things to y'all. I'm shaking some stuff out. Everything in your life ain't right. I'm shaking it out. Everybody, everybody ain't going over with y'all. Everybody ain't going in ministry with y'all. Everybody ain't going to cross over with y'all. Everybody ain't going to be blessed with y'all. Because once I'm shaking some things out in your life, I'm shaking some people out in your life. I'm shaking some friends out in your life. I'm shaking some white friends and girlfriends out in your life. I'm Because he wants me to keep drawing me to it. 